Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to a unique craft brewery brewery founded by a Franco-American couple. They brew American style craft beer with only the best French ingredients. So I actually just <laughs> mentioned what was written here. But let me tell you something, they're the nicest people I've met so far in French Tastic. They're they welcome me so warmly it's English. So everything started with a phone call. I was so, so happy. And then I met with them just three days after on a beautiful day. Their brewery is very well located. It's uh, in Amboise, in downtown Amboise. Very, very well located because it's just a block away from the chateau. They kindly spend all the morning with me and they share their story and they explain everything about their brewery. So if you want to learn more about this very amazing French American couple, and their unique brewery. Keep watching. I'm Katie, and this is Mathieu. Hi. We are the owners of Artisanal Brewing in Amboise. This is the bar part of our, our brewery, and the brew house is behind us. So Katie, you're American. Yes. And Matt, you're French. I am. So how this brewery came up? How? Well, it's kind of uh, the, the fruit of a lot of years in the US visiting a lot of brewery and really feeling so good in many brew pubs that we visited. The willingness that we had to come back to France in uh, the early 2018 and for us to do the work for ourselves. Um, I was a home brewer for many 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 years, uh, always very dreaming of brewing pro. Uh, I had done some pro brews in, in the US. And so when we looked at the skills that we can bring to the table between my experience brewing and, and Katie's art um, background and, and graphic design background, it became somewhat natural that the brewery could be a good idea. Well, we also spent many years in Southern California and there are a ton of breweries there. And we just saw, you know, we had a lot of friends and ours, you know, we ourselves would go for an entire, you know, go for an entire day to go visit a brewery and taste all the beer. And whenever we would come back to France, we really missed the variety of beer that we could have and that experience of going to a brewery. And we thought, maybe we can just make one. <laughs> so when we uh, came back, we looked at the beer scene and we definitely saw that there was potential. And there was also very limited players in the brewery community in France who made American style beer, but really focusing on the French raw materials that are so unique. So so different than, than what you can get from the US. Uh, not necessarily better or worse, but just with different aroma and, and, and flavor profile. So we decided to do a brewery in the medieval and royal downtown uh, with a brew pub, with the production um, attached to the uh, serving area using mainly French raw materials. I mean, truly it was a bit selfish. We wanted the beer that we missed from the United States. <laughs> But at the same time, we wanted something that we would be excited to share with people back home in the States as well. Uh, because we only use French raw materials, some of the beers that people have become accustomed to, like IPAs, have a completely different flavor when we make them because we're not always using all the hops that are super common in the States. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're getting to retry something you love in like a whole new way. How do you implement, if this is the word, the French culture and the American culture in your so I can answer to that. So the way we do it is we take uh, a general specifications for a beer. For example, we decided to follow the cream ale, the American amber, the uh, many West Coast IPA and the stout beer style. And these have guidelines and we are trying to it's stay... like a recipe. Yes. It's, yes, it's a recipe that we're... It's not so much a recipe, it's not like uh, cream ale is done only one way. But it's more of a specific guideline in terms of color, aroma that you should find, more of a... Um, um, bitterness, bitterness, sweetness, and then flavors. Within all these parameters, what you can do is uh, bring your own touch. And the way we did it, despite using the American guidelines, we decided to bring our own touch by using some French raw material. So all the malt that we use for our signature beer are coming from the... Um, Région Centre, which is an hour and a half away, we have a very, very uh, nice maltery, and we get all our malt from there. And all the hops that we use in these have 
um, are actually coming from the Alsace region. Mm -hmm. And this is giving us some unique flavor, some unique aroma within this beer. So if you were to taste a cream ale in the United States, they wouldn't be using the same hops that we're using here. So tasting our beers is like putting a new spin on an existing beer style. Yeah. Um, another way that we have incorporated our kind of French-American duo is that um, through the branding and the marketing of our of our brand, artisanal um, is artisanal, artisanal in four words. So we believe that beer making is an art, and so it's like art is an ale, and we make mostly ales for the moment. And then like all of our design for our labels and our logo and all of this, they're all very artistic. We tried to stay in the theme of art. So all the titles of the beers, the names of the beers, are words that are often used in both languages. Like uh, chromatic is a word that's used in French and English to talk about light and color. Um, and we just thought that that would be kind of a cool way to marry both of our uh, cultures together, to always try to kind of live in both. We also um, barrel aged beer. We are doing a barrel program where we take some of the uh, beer that uh, we uh, design and we put them in a whiskey barrel and that whiskey barrel is giving a lot of unique flavor and aroma including uh, this barrel specifically add uh, a very peated uh, whiskey and we are really trying to diversify a little bit our product line, our core product line with some seasonal beer, some hard seltzer and some barrel aged beer to really have a product line that can be interesting for people who might be a little bit more niche or people who are a little bit more interested in complex aroma and people who just don't want gluten or need to have a lighter, fruitier beverage. So tell me about those big fermenters. How did you get them in? It was a, a challenge. <laughs> Bringing them here was, I think, the worst day we had in forever. Mainly because... Oh, the... come on. It was so fun. There was like a team of burly guys and all the little old, all the old neighbors were outside. Like, what's Spying happening? on us. <laughs> the, the, the building was not made to be a brewery. It was originally a theater. We had a movie theater here until the mid-90s. It's the original cinema of it was. And the building is not straight. You have angles everywhere. None of the walls are actually parallel. So we had to have a custom-built brew house, a custom-built fermenter. These fermenters are, the size of it is 20 beer barrel, 20 BBL fermenters. And usually they would be a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. But since we are in a former cinema with very, very, very high ceiling, we decided to optimize the space of the building by going very, very vertical. So these are a little bit um, narrower. made taller and, and less fat. And significantly back. taller. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so um, the day the, the, the brewery was delivered, obviously the architect didn't realize the width of every single equipment and one of them was stuck. We could not bring... One, one of them is slightly larger than the others. So oh. we were jack hammering the wall of the building to get the fermenters in. So that's why it was in the middle of a heat wave, like 110 plus Fahrenheit yes. day. We were breaking the walls to get the equipment in. The three container arrive, we block the streets, and then we start unloading it. So you have this giant rig um, that is pulling out one by one. It's a giant crane that looks like a human arm. Whoa. Like it's big. I have a photo, I'll send it to you. And it literally has like a pinch on the end, and it's on the back of a truck. So you have two trucks. You have the truck with the stuff in it, and then you have the truck with the crane mounted on the back. And the arm reaches inside the truck and pulls them out. Oh. You know, like almost like you're, you know, like you see like giants in children's stories, like mm -hmm. pulling it out and kind of holding it while they like another, like was it a pallet jack or what do you call it? So a at that lift? point they were putting it inside the building horizontal right. and then we were bringing it to the production area and then with a pallet lift we were able to lift it up straight up and bringing it down. So it, it, it took over it was 14 a long hours, day. it was like yeah. 14 hours. It was, but it was only like four or five people. Yeah, yeah, it was. It uh, wasn't some army yeah, of people. It was just like four or five guys yeah. with like their 
this is what they do all day is like yeah, go and, yeah. and yeah. set up Official giant equipment. Yeah. And okay, well, um, so can we go upstairs yeah, and see? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's an art and a science. It's very artistic to create a recipe, but executing the recipe is really a science. You have yeah. pH that you need to measure at every single time. You have sugar that you need to measure before and after. So, so it's very artistic in the recipe, in the creation, in the branding, in the marketing, but the execution has to be precisely done. Yeah. And, and that, that's the fun part. That's also, for me, the, the main challenge of this business is to make the best beer I humanly can make. And that's my challenge. Wow. Look at every single step of the brewing process. Can we improve here? Can we limit the waste of carbon dioxide or the waste of energy or the waste at every single point and make a better beer? That's and, really... And it's well thought out beforehand. Like, yes. we don't just throw a bunch of stuff together and go, yeah. let's see what we get. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we might choose to do some interesting things when you're deciding what kind of recipe you want yes, to make, yeah. but uh, I think uh, sometimes people think of craft or artisanal and they think, oh, you know, it's kind of like just someone kind of passionately making something mm. and, and we'll, just, we'll just take whatever we get. Not really. Like, we might choose to like yeah. use some fruit or use a particular strain of yeast yeah. to do something experimental, but to a limit, we know what it will do, and we also know the things to measure and the parameters yeah. to kind of be within while we're making it, mm -hmm. so that we will always make something that is good for people to drink, safe for people to drink. Um, one of the more exciting things that we're getting to do with our brewery now, I think, yes. is that we're making more and more beer specifically for clients. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Like we make our own beer and, and we, we, like we it. bottle it and we sell yeah. it and it's got our name on it. Uh, but more and more we're working with people who are having, you know, Michelin star restaurants yes. and castles and people who kind of realize, oh, I can have a beer and have my name yeah. on it and it can be the kind of beer that I want versus what's already out there. Um, so Matt gets to make a custom yeah. recipe for them. and Because the innovation and the research and all of that is really what drives me. It's really the uh, interesting part of the job to get your wheels to spin as fast as they can and mm. try to find the right raw materials, the right aroma, and, and differentiate yourself from every other craft beer that there is on, on, on a, in France. Or in yeah. But mostly have that moment with the customer, right? Where they've told you what they want, yes. and we all go away yeah. and we do our work for a yeah. while, and then we get back together and they go, oh, this is it. Yeah. This is exactly what, this is what I would imagined. And wow. you managed to like make it. I think that's kind of yeah. amazing. Like any creative process where a customer comes to you and says, I want this, and you all kind of go, I think we all are saying the same thing, let's see. Mm -hmm. and, and then at the yeah, end, when they're really happy with it, that's, that's that also come that's from a the good fact time. That I was a sales guy for 15 years, and often I was selling stuff, and I didn't even know that production or engineering could follow and deliver. And they were like, yeah, I sold that. And the engineering team is like, well, we can do it. I'm like, oh, shit. And here I can <laughs> control both sides of the business. I can be like, hey, you know, let's create this, and then I, can, I am responsible for elaborating the recipe and brewing it and, and really I can control every single step of the way but starting by what I've always done which is try to get somebody on board and happy and excited about the idea. Amazing! This Sorry, is I know so it's very long. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. This is a, actually two vessels. So oh, this yeah. is where all the grain comes out. This is the oh. chute where after they're done, we open this door and like all this grain just comes spilling out and we have to put it in like a big bin. Um, and uh, we're actually working on what to do with those grains. Mm -hmm. We have been trying to develop uh, crackers because they're still full of nutrients. They're yeah. still plenty fine to eat with. A few breweries are doing this in France already and it's all over the United States. Oh. Um, so we're trying to make crackers out of them for the brew pub because yeah. we figure it goes with cheese and charcuterie. Yeah. <laughs> but in the US they make like granola bars and wow. pizza dough and like all kinds of stuff. I wanted to add because I did not show it on the video but 
they have more accommodations than what I show. So they have food and alcoholic drinks, they're family friend and dog friendly. Please check out their website, they, there is everything on there. And if you happen to be around Amboise, or actually if you're just, you know, near Paris, uh, you can definitely just, you know, in an hour or two by, by train, get down and, and visit them. They're very nice people. And I still did not taste them, but um, they gave me samples, which is extremely kind. I was so embarrassed. But I'm going to tell you when, once I will taste them, uh, what I think about it. But there is, there, you know, there is flavor for everybody, I even like gluten-free. Uh, so just they're, they're amazing.